Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's Independent Media Production. Today, we're doing a combination exploration, myth busting, what does it even mean, deep dive into cutting through the mix. At the end of the day, cutting through the mix really boils down to making sure that the interval between your batter head and your rezzo on the snare is Cutting through the mix is not drum specific, it's not instrument specific. If you jump on YouTube right now and type in cut through the mix, you're gonna find videos for every instrument you could possibly think of and every version of what it even means to cut through the mix with that instrument. So what this means for us is that if we're all trying to cut through the mix, but we're also all part of the mix, then there's really no way to win in this scenario. The underlying issue that we're gonna run into here is that not every instrument and every part of the mix is the number one thing all the time. It gets passed around and at any given time, there's a part of what you're hearing that is the primary part and then things around it that are supporting that. It might be the vocal, it's often the vocal. It could be the snare drum sometimes, but it's hard to say. It might be a guitar solo, but all these things together are what actually generate what we call the mix. It's all of the instruments and all of the voices together generating one overall sound where hopefully we can hear everything beautifully and all the instruments and voices are able to speak. Now for what we're working on today, we would like to define the mix that we're trying to cut through as one of three scenarios. Either we are playing live and the drums are not mic'd, we're playing live and the drums are mic'd, or we're in a recording situation. These live scenarios could be anything from a rehearsal space to a sound check to a live gig to a huge live gig, anywhere where you're interacting with other musicians in real time and trying to hear each other. Now with two of these scenarios, the live mic scenario and the recording scenario, we have a third party somewhere out there who is in charge of the levels of these microphones and who is gonna be affecting the experience of the audience in terms of what they're hearing just as much as we are with what we're playing. What this means for us as players is that we are not the ultimate gatekeeper of the sound of our instrument as it's passing through the microphones on its way to whatever audience. And if we are not thinking about that, there are things we can do while we're playing that are actually gonna make it much harder for us to ultimately be present or cut through the mix in the final recording or during this performance. The analogy that we decided on here today for this is making a smoothie in a blender. A blender or a mixer is kind of the same thing. We're putting in a bunch of ingredients and in the end, we wanna have all of those ingredients present in the final product. Now, if we shove as many bananas as we can and as many strawberries as we can and everything that we wanna put into this blender as possible, fill it to the very brim, dump milk on top of that, it's absolutely full, there's no room for anything else, first of all, it's going to be very difficult to blend this mixture because there's no room in there for the blender to blend. Secondarily, we have a lot of each ingredient and we haven't really put too much thought into the balance between all of these ingredients. So if we wanna know that there is banana and strawberry and milk and kale and whatever else you're putting in there, we have to think about how these are all gonna to sit together so that we can experience that they're all present equally. Translating this to music, Density of orchestration, density of notes, density of just the frequency spectrum is going to make it very difficult for us to articulately hear any particular part of the music that we're listening to. This issue of density translates to performance on the kit and in a band in a very similar fashion, which is to say that 
if we have too much of anything going on, it's going to be overwhelming, and the other parts of what we're listening to will be inaudible, will be muddy, will be hidden, and we won't get that sense that we can hear everything that's going on in the performance. Now, there's a lot of post-production, EQ, plugins, different things that go into making great mixes, both live and in recording. There's a lot that can be done to sweeten up what's happening. But what we want to talk about today is things to do before that, things to think about, where you can deliver a better product from your instrument and from your band so that all of that stuff can just be icing on the cake rather than trying to fix a challenging recording or performance. If we're thinking about the mix overall, the first thing that we can do to start to cut through, we're just gonna keep saying that, to cut through the mix is to tone down the density of our own playing because we're contributing a lot of stuff to this mix. And the first thing that's gonna get lost is if we're playing very busy in a manner that other people in the band are playing super busy. If there's somebody on stage, for instance, playing 16th notes, maybe we don't also need to play 16th notes on the hi-hat. Additionally, if there's a lot of low end in the bass, maybe we don't need to do fills on the floor toms all the time because it's living in that same space and there's just not a lot of room there right then. And in terms of an overarching thing, dynamics in general and specifically bringing our softs softer rather than making our louds louder. It's easier to get someone's attention sometimes by whispering than shouting. And surely if you've ever been in a room where there's a lot of people shouting at once, Shouting's not gonna get us anything. It's just gonna add more shouting to the room. It's not gonna solve any problems. That said, if you can just overall bring your whole dynamic down a little bit and utilize that as a way to help everyone else also bring their dynamics down a little bit and bring back some headroom into your playing, it'll give your kit a chance to shine when you do go for the dense rim shot fill because the din is not already at that level. Our fills can't really jump out if they're not any more intense than the rest of what's happening. So we do have to remember that things like punctuation, in the case of drum set, fills and ideas at the end of a phrase, they're gonna mean more if there's a little bit of room to grow when we finally get there. This part of the balance spectrum gives us a more even sound for everything. It brings the noise floor down a little bit and it gives us the opportunity for there to be contrast, both dynamically and in terms of the density that we're playing because it's a sudden change. It's gonna stand out more, it's gonna mean more, and it's gonna do what we wanted it to do in the first place. Now, we need to revisit something that we mentioned early on, which has to do with this idea that everyone in the band is probably equally concerned with making sure that they are cutting through the mix and being present in the recording or the performance that day. This, we just gotta say it, is an ego issue that we have to be very, very careful of because no matter what I practiced before I came to this session or this gig that I'm excited to show off and cram into the tune, Chances are high that everybody else in the band did the same thing and they all want their part to shine just as much as I want my part to shine and none of us talked about that. So now we're on stage, everybody wants to shine, we get into a volume, density, arms race, we experience mutually assured destruction and the whole sound is completely ruined by our egos trying to cut past everybody else on stage when at the end of the day, we're playing together we should be working together, and the product of that working together is why we got into this in the first place. The end result of analyzing all of this is that the idea, the very terminology of cutting through the mix is a misnomer. It's not actually what we're looking for. We're not trying to violently pry our way through the rest of the sound. We just want space in the topography, 
of this performance for the parts that we're going to play so that we can have our stuff heard, everyone can have their stuff heard, and we ultimately get a performance that's greater than the sum of the parts rather than just being able to point at the end of the bridge when I played a cool fill and make sure that everybody I'm showing it to hears it. The ultimate term that we need to move toward rather than cutting through anything is balance. Balance does not mean everyone gives 100% all the time. That's way too much percent and we don't need that. What we need instead is to understand the hierarchy of importance of all of the voices, all of the instruments, all of the parts of the music that we're playing and make sure that as they go through the music, the points where each bit needs to jump out and do its part, that there's space for it to do that. The underlying conclusion here is that starting from a place of what symbols should I use, what drum head should I use, how should I change my tuning so that I can cut through the mix, that's going to send us down a road that's not going to get us much in the way of results right away, and it's going to cost more money. It's much more practical and much more effective to instead start with understanding what needs to happen in your group, and particularly when it comes, again, to the dynamic threshold and the density between everyone bring the volume level of everything down a little bit and start to analyze everybody but yourself. See what they're doing, see if you're doubling anything that they're doing, and make sure that if there are windows in the playing for you to step out, that you utilize those and make sure that you are being supportive the rest of the time. Because at the end of the day, again, it's not about those moments. Those moments are part of a greater whole. And if we can get balance in terms of dynamics and in terms of density over the whole performance, live, recording, whatever it is, doesn't matter what kind of band, then the end result is gonna be better, the musicians will be happier, and the audience is gonna love it. Talking to, and if you can, working with older musicians who have a lot of experience will start to show you that this is a facet, a fundamental facet of musical maturity, coming into ensembles and groups and new situations with these kinds of things in mind. It takes experience. It doesn't mean that you have to be a certain age or a certain amount of experience. It's more about a sphere of interest, making sure that you're interested in what's happening around you, and making sure that you know how to talk to them and work with them musically to get to that point where you're all working together to make it exactly what you want. Next time, we're going to revisit this topic with probably a lot of the things that you were expecting us to talk about today, which is about tonal choices, instrument choices, and performance choices that will aid in being able to be both supportive and having the capacity to step out when you are at the top of the hierarchy in the music that you're making. We're going to be diving deep into tone and specifically frequencies and where these things live in the mix of the kit and then in the mix of the rest of the band, more so than exactly what you ought to be playing in your performance. And thanks so much for coming along with us. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And jump down, please, to the Patreon and check out everything we have over there. If you're not a member already, follow the link below. We have lots of tiers and options over there, anecdotes, symbol series, lots of things that we are super excited about. And also, as we finish up part one of this topic of cutting through the mix, would love to know your experience with cutting through the mix. Is it something that somebody told you you needed to do? Is it just a thing you heard you know, in magazines and amongst other drummers. What's your relationship to it and what did you do when it was something that you had to do? Mm -hmm.